I'm your host, Larissa Worstiak. Through this podcast, I aim to empower and inspire jewelry entrepreneurs and innovators so they can thrive by doing what they love. I'm passionate about digital marketing for jewelry brands, and I'm excited to share my passion with you. This is episode 91, and today I'm going to discuss what you can expect to pay for common jewelry marketing services. In the last episode, I explained how you can determine an appropriate marketing budget for your jewelry brand, and now I'm going to illuminate how you can spend that budget and what you can hope to get from it. But before we get to that topic, I want to share some marketing-related news and insights from the past week that caught my attention. I loved reading about how Signet Jewelers, the parent brand of Jared, K Jewelers, Zales, and others, is reimagining the post-COVID-19 customer experience. Their Path to Brilliance transformation plan is really about prioritizing omnichannel and putting the customer first. Even though they aren't seeing as many customers in stores and scaling back on brick and mortar real estate, as a result, they have invested money and effort into the online engagement strategy by offering value added services like virtual bridal jewelry consultations. These consultations are not handled by bots, but technically trained online consultants. Signet is wasting no time at all, pivoting from brick and mortar to a more integrated online customer experience. And I'm inspired by their willingness to embrace new technologies and experiment with new forms of consumer engagement. Are you thinking about setting up your e-commerce shop or even switching to a new e-commerce platform? You may be wondering, what should I be looking for in an e-commerce platform before I make a decision? An article from CMS Wire recently shared some insights on the subject. Not only do you wanna choose an e-commerce platform that's placing a focus on third-party integrations like integrations with online marketplaces such as Amazon, eBay, and even social media platforms, but you also want to choose a platform that's built for optimal user experience and flexibility. In addition, you'll want to consider choosing an e-commerce platform that includes embedded payment options and fraud protections along with robust analytics. If you want to learn more about the various e-commerce platforms available today, you can listen to episode 59, which is all about this topic. To better understand how the COVID-19 pandemic has affected e-commerce spending, PFS, a global e-commerce solutions provider, recently examined how consumer behaviors have pivoted among retail categories, including jewelry. Across consumer goods categories, the data shows an increase in e-commerce volume since the start of the pandemic. According to a summary of the data, quote, across all categories, over four in 10 consumers have shopped with online retailers or websites they haven't used before, increasing to 58% of jewelry shoppers during the pandemic, end quote. So basically more jewelry shoppers are open to trying new key e-commerce brands. And this presents a lot of opportunities for direct to consumer jewelry brands who are trying to reach new customers. If you want to get the links to the articles I share in this segment of the podcast, you can sign up for my email newsletter by visiting joyjoya.com slash sign up, and you'll get a digest with the links every time a new episode drops. Okay, let's get to it. If you're struggling to imagine how your marketing budget will be spent, then you'll definitely want to keep listening since I'll be explaining what you can expect to pay for various types of marketing services when enlisting the services of an outside consultant or agency. Please consider the following as general guidance only since prices for marketing services can vary based on many factors, including your geographical location, your individual goals, the amount of work that needs to be done, consultant or agency experience, and more. However, if you do encounter a service that costs significantly less or significantly more than the ranges I provide, then you should be wary and move forward with caution. In those cases, the service provider may either be inexperienced or unqualified, or they could be trying to swindle you. You should also know that you can probably outsource many of these marketing services to an overseas freelancer who can perform the work at a low cost. However, before you decide to do that, you should consider the headaches involved with language barriers and even cultural differences. Furthermore, the very nature of freelance work means the contractor is likely delivering your finished product on a piecemeal, as-needed basis. So that person will never really have the chance to become 
intimately familiar with your brand. As a result, the deliverables may be inconsistent and even require multiple revisions, so the quality may definitely suffer. Developing a long-term relationship with a consultant or agency who can invest the time, effort, and expertise in your brand will help you ensure that the job gets done right the first time and that the work is consistent with the professional image you want to present to your customers. I'll be sharing approximate pricing for content marketing, search marketing, social media marketing and advertising, influencer marketing, email marketing, event marketing, branding, and e-commerce optimization, all common marketing services that today's jewelry brands need. Let's start with content marketing. So content marketing involves two major components, content strategy and content creation. To hire a professional who, create, who can create a content strategy, you should expect to pay a one-time fee of 500 to a few thousand dollars, depending on how many channels you're using and how multifaceted the strategy will be. For written content like blog posts, which would be created to support your content strategy, you can expect to pay between 150 and 700 per piece, depending on the word count, the amount of SEO optimization desired, the amount of research involved, and more. Of course, you can always source cheap content from sites like Fiverr, but the result will probably look cheap. If you're thinking about adding video to your content marketing mix, you can expect to pay between a hundred, uh, sorry, a thousand dollars and three thousand dollars per finished minute when working with a semi-professional video production company. Yes, video is expensive. Let's talk about search marketing. So how much should you be paying for assistance with search engine optimization? You can definitely get started on your own for free by executing some quick wins. Paid tools like Moz and SEM Rush, which can support and streamline your search engine optimization efforts, cost between $79 per month and $400 plus per month. Hiring a consultant or agency will cost between $500 and $5,000 per month, depending on the scope of the work. The process of optimizing a website for search engines involves many moving parts, so you'll want to get crystal clear on what the agency is promising before you agree to any service offerings or packages. Let's talk about social media marketing and advertising. Of course, social media marketing can cost nothing, excluding your time, if you do it all yourself. However, you're probably going to have to spend some money on high quality product and lifestyle photography. Hiring an agency to handle your social media marketing can cost as little as $500 a month for very basic planning and posting on one platform like Instagram with little to no original content creation, so you have to provide all the content, and can cost up to $4,000 a month for very comprehensive management. On the high end, a consultant or agency would be managing multiple social media platforms, developing a strategy with a plan and goals, creating and posting original content according to that strategy, monitoring KPIs, interacting and engaging with potential customers, and more. In addition to organic social media marketing, you may want to add paid social media advertising campaigns to your marketing mix. I highly recommend hiring a professional to handle social media advertising for you, since setting up and executing successful advertising campaigns takes skill and expertise. In addition, since you'll be spending money on those ads, you'll really want to feel confident that your money is being spent efficiently. To be frank, advertising platforms like Facebook Business Manager and Google Ads are not very intuitive to use. All the clients I know who have tried navigating these platforms themselves end up feeling very frustrated and defeated. They may be able to figure out how to initially set up the campaign, but they're never quite sure they've done it correctly or are spending their money the right way. Furthermore, they may not understand how to interpret the results. Without factoring in the actual advertising budget, a consultant or agency will cost you an initial setup fee and then a monthly maintenance fee that's usually a percentage of the monthly ad spend. The setup fee can be between $250 and $1,000. Typically, when it comes to brands with larger advertising budgets, an agency will charge a maintenance fee that amounts to about 10 to 20% of the monthly ad budget or they may opt to charge a set monthly retainer or flat fee. 
For the ads themselves, my small business clients usually invest about $200 to $500 per month. However, some Facebook ad experts will, will argue that you need to spend a few thousand per month on ads to get the data you need to iterate effectively and see any results. Let's talk about influencer marketing. So a number of factors will impact how much an influencer charges for the services, like follower count, how you'd like the influencer to feature your product, the amount of work involved, the number of channels being used, and more. In addition, if you're communicating with the influencer via an agency, then that agency will also charge a premium. To give you a general idea, mid-tier in Instagram influencers with 50,000 to 500,000 followers typically charge 500 to 5,000 for a single Instagram post. If you want more specific information, I would suggest going to a site a regularly updated site like Influencer Marketing Hub or reach out to some influencers yourself and see how much they would charge for the post that you want. Email marketing. So the cost of email marketing depends on factors like how many subscribers you have, how often you send emails, your email marketing goals, and more. First, you'll need to consider the operating costs of your email marketing platform. For example, MailChimp offers a free plan that allows you to maintain 2,000 contacts on one list. After you exceed 2,000 contacts, the pricing ranges from $9.99 per month to $2.99 per month. Working with a consultant or agency to help you manage and execute your comprehensive email marketing strategy can cost you $500 per month or more, depending on how frequently you email your subscribers and how sophisticated you want to get with tactics like automation, personalization, and segmentation. Event marketing. Of all the services that I'm mentioning in this episode, event marketing varies the most since events can be scaled from very small and intimate with mostly DIY elements to very large and elaborate. Furthermore, most events are now being held virtually, so the cost of a physical location is no longer a variable. Instead, brands need to worry about costs associated with technology and paid social media promotion. Theoretically, virtual events can be executed for free, minus any cost to promote the event. Professionally produced in-person events can cost as little as $5,000 and be as expensive as a few hundred thousand dollars. Branding. So working with a graphic designer to refine your branding definitely requires a significant investment but your brand is a long-term commitment that can make or break your business. An original logo will cost between $750 and $5,000. A complete brand identity with style guide will cost you $3,000 on the low end, but can cost as high as 20 grand depending on the designer's experience and level of involvement. Most graphic designers that I know will charge between $3,000 and $6,000 6, for the following comprehensive branding services a brand kickoff workshop, a mood board presentation, branding directions in a brand system, and a brand style guide. E-commerce optimization. So how much can you expect to pay a professional to set up your e-commerce website? Well, first you gotta consider the technology costs. A platform like Shopify will cost you $29 per month on the low end and $2.99 per month on the high end. Website hosting will cost about $5 a month, if you purchase a pre-built premium Shopify theme, that theme will cost you approximately $180, but you'll likely have to customize it to make it work for your brand. You can hire a developer to customize that pre-built Shopify theme for a few thousand, a few hundred to a few thousand dollars, depending on the complexity of your requirements. For a completely customized sh Shopify store, you can expect to pay a design agency between $5,000 and $20,000. Do any of these numbers surprise you or do they match your expectations? Do you feel comfortable investing the money into the marketing services that you need? What reservations do you have? What do you think? You can always email me Larissa, that's L-A-R-Y-S-S-A -S -S at joyjoya.com with your questions, comments, and feedback.